Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first uh, edition or segment of Daily Portion of German. Uh, each episode will be seven to ten minutes long, and are and they are designed to help you recall or review what you've learned of the German language before, and to help you develop your reading skills further. As you will see, uh, the text to be explored will vary from literary text to short stories. Uh, to excerpts from philosophical, art historical, or theological writings. Some sessions will deal with grammatical issues. Some will be easier texts where you can enjoy just cruising along, and others will be more challenging. Uh, all will be, will be presented in an upbeat fashion, uh, rendering your experience both enjoyable and informative, hopefully. The goal of each session uh, is to improve your comprehension of German, regardless of whether you are a beginner, intermediate, or an advanced reader. So let's jump in. We will be assisted today by CJ. Uh, hello, CJ. How are you doing? You want to say hello? I'm doing well. Hello. Great. And we will follow this procedure. I will read the sentence out, uh, sentence out loud, and uh, CJ will repeat after me, and you will, re will re repeat the sentence uh, with with him. And that way, you, you get a sense of the flow of the of the sentences and get to pronounce the words and get to sort of feel a, a part of what we're doing. Then I'll ask him questions from time to time and uh, try to imagine in your mind what the answers are as we deconstruct the sentences and, and hopefully make it clear, make a path clear to you to translate yourself, just as, as uh, CJ will translate at the end of these steps that we will t be taking. Uh, regarding Kafka, as you may know, this short story or novella, Die Verwandlung, uh, translated The Metamorphosis, is one of the most famous um, short stories in European literature. It's really a novella. It's a little bit longer than a short story. Franz Kafka's dates are 1883 to 1924, so uh, thus, thus uh, late 19th century and early 20th century literature. And he is known for his Im imaginative style, humor, um, social comment, uh, innuendos are endless uh, with Kafka. Um, and lots of lots of sort of uh, statements or, or statements between the lines. So let's dive in. I think you'll enjoy the enjoy the the uh, the dive or the swim. Uh, one time I remember listening to a, a a language story and there was a picture on the on the page with somebody driving in a car and he said, uh, "Dive right in. The language is fine." Okay, so let's dive in. So I'll, I'll read off uh, read this. Uh, and this is the, one of the most famous story beginnings, or first sentences in a story uh, in European literature as well. Very well known. Okay, uh, you could many people can just cite it uh, by heart. Okay, here we go. Als Gregor Samsa eines Morgens aus unruhigen Träumen erwachte, fand er sich in seinem Bett zu einem ungeheuren Ungeziffer verwandelt. Everybody, and when I say everybody, uh, CJ will read it, but please read along with him, as we do. Go ahead. Als Gregor Samsa eines Morgens aus den unruhigen Träumen erwachte, fand er sich in seinem Bett zu einem ungeheuren <laughs> Ungesiefer verwandelt. Okay, so where's, we always look for the main verb first, uh, and, and also uh, distinguishing between subordinate clauses and main clauses. So where's the main verb? Fond. Good. So as you scan this, you'll see als, which always introduces a subordinate clause, as as he awaked, etc. So you can't really put a period after that. So this is called a dependent clause, subordinate clause, as opposed to the main clause. And syntactically, um, the subordinate clauses all are, are dependent upon for their structure, uh, I mean, for their uh, relationship to the main clause, dependent upon um, the, the main clause. Okay. So fand er sich... Uh, and what goes with that for the verb complex? Uh, verwandelt. Good. He found himself, so here you're using a reflexive pronoun. Verwandelt is a past participle, meaning to uh, transform. Past participle serving as a predicate uh, adjective. He found himself transformed. And this is, is this a dative case in Zion Embed? Yes. Yeah. Uh, to a huge uh, vermin. Okay, and awaken actually comes from the German word erwachen, so um, erwachen. So this is 30% um, uh, of the, all the words we use in English actually come from the German side, and about 60% come from the Latin side currently. Okay, so, and this is unpeaceful, unruhigen, dreams, our, our word dream comes from traum, 
from the German side, therefore. And this is a genitive, meaning time when, so one morning. OK. Uh, I think we have enough now just to do the whole thing um, to a huge vermin. OK. Uh, you want to do the whole thing slowly? Um, sure. CJ? Mm -hmm. As Gregor Samsa awoke one morning from unpeaceful dreams, he found himself in his bed changed or transformed into a um, huge vermin. Good, into a huge vermin, great. Then going on, er lag auf seinem panzerartig harten Rücken und sah, wenn er den Kopf ein wenig hob, seinen, etc. So just go up to this point right here, uh, er lag. Er lag auf seinem Panzer, panzerartig harten Rücken und sah, when er den Kopf ein wenig hab. Okay, this is a good uh, practice with the uh, strong verbs because this is from liegen, liegen lag legen. This is from seien, seien saga seien. So the vowel pattern is is e a, seien saga se e, and then hob comes from haben to lift. So this means he lay, and this means he saw, and then he lifted. He lifted. Um, okay, so here, um, auf can take either accusative or dative, so it's actually dative here, which we mark with um, carrots uh, on answering the question where, or to, uh, uh, where where something is, to or for, or, or where something is from, for the dative, on his, on his uh, armor-like hard back, and he saw, and then how would you translate this little one, this is, when he's, when he lifted, where's the direct object of this phrase? When he lifted, den Kopf. Den Kopf. He, the head. Now we, we wouldn't really say the head because German often uh, omits the the possessive pronoun. So this would be when he lifted his head a little. Okay. Um, let's see. Why don't you go through, see if you can put this together? And and since we've gone through and analyzed some detail, you might be able to do it together as you, together with um, CJ. Go ahead. He lay on his armor-like hard back, uh, shell. No, the back is right. Back and saw when he lifted his head a little bit. Good. Let's stop right there. Now, what did he see uh, up to here? Where's the direct object of what he what he saw? Seinen Bauch. Good. His stomach or his belly. <laughs> Here's the direct object. And I put a circle around the direct object. We always try to find the core sentence in every uh, longer uh, in the in a longer sentence uh, which consists of the the, the verb first uh, subject second and direct object third okay and so he saw when he lifted his head a little his uh, stomach and this is these are adjectives so um, uh, curved brown now here fun is a special kind of a construction this is what we call an extended modifier or extended uh, attribute construction, which which kind of holds you at a at abeyance until you can get the meaning of it. So he saw his 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 curved brown belly, and then you go to the past participle, which concludes this construction, which and this is Thailand means to divide, past participle, which was divided by um, arch formed uh, ridges. Sort of like a, a turtle, you know, these arch formed ridges. Okay, and then uh, dessen refers back to what, um, CJ? What's the antecedent? Bow. Oh. Yeah, it goes back to the, on on which of dessen's genitive, on on whose height, i.e., the height of of this rounded uh, uh, t tub uh, belly that he's seeing sort of strangely in front of him. Um, sich die Bedecke. Um, and then zum gänzlichen niedergleiten bereit. Uh, let's just read uh, from this to the end of the sentence together. Uh, auf dessen Höhe sich die Bettdecke, everybody. Auf dessen Höhe sich die Bettdecke. Zum gänzlichen niedergleiten bereit. Zum gänzlichen niedergleiten bereit. Kaum noch erhalten könnte. Kaum noch erhalten könnte. Okay. Uh, on whose height? Now, in this phrase, all the way up to um, here, CJ, where's the um, where's the subject? 
um, the deep bed deck. The, yeah, the deep bed deca. Exactly. So this is like the blanket, the, the, the which, that which covers the, the bed. Uh, on which, on whose height, the bed, the bed, the, the the blanket, and then where's the verb? Just skipping this part in the middle. Erhalten kunta. Yeah. On whose height the the cover um, could um, could hardly maintain. And where's the direct object? It's sort of hard to find. See. Sí. See. Sí. Really, really good. This, this is a complicated sentence, uh, uh, to to say the least. Okay. On on uh, the the cover. Um, on on whose height the cover could uh, could barely still maintain itself, uh, and then this explains why it, the 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 cover could could hardly keep keep on top of this rounded surface, because it says uh, ready for in for an entire sliding down. This is an infinitive made into a noun, which we which uh, then. Uh, conveys the sense of a gerund, ing word, uh, sliding down, uh, prepared for an entire sliding down. And then, uh, so put that whole thing together. Um, let's see. Um, and he saw, if you want to start with there, right there, CJ. Okay. And, and see if you can follow um, as, as you go through it. Don't hurry. You don't have to hurry. We have, we have probably an hour left. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. And saw... When he raised his head a little bit, mm -hmm. his his um, his arched uh, brown back divided uh, stomach or or or, or belly. Like, I keep thinking because I keep seeing bauch and just thinking that something's exactly like that. This stomach, is his belly. The rook in his back and the bauch his belly. Yeah. So we saw his his arched or domed, sometimes brown belly mm -hmm. divided by this is like arched ridges that's right mm -hmm. arched formed arched, ridges arch formed ridges um on at at like whose height mm -hmm. um the bed covers um ready um for an entire sliding down mm -hmm. could hardly still uh, like sustain themselves M maintain it itself maintain, yeah. maintain itself yeah right yeah. singular bed cover <laughs> you go back and pick up that that uh, the whether it's singular or plural. That's right, because this because the verb is is singular. Great. Okay. Very complicated sentence. Um, people have been uh, admiring the sentence for a long time. Okay. We, we just two more lines before we stop the first session. Seine vielen im Vergleich zu seinem sonstigen Umfang kläglich dünnen Beine. Everybody. Seine vielen im Vergleich zu seinem Sonstigen, sonstigen Umfang kläglich dünnen Beine. Good. Um, flimmerten ihm hilflos vor den Augen. Flimmerten ihm hilf hilflos vor den Augen. Okay, so where's the main verb? So, flimmerten? Yeah, so they, so provide a, a pronoun. Oh, they, they, they fl like, flicker, flickered. flickered. They flickered. Yeah past tense now now you're looking for a singular or a, or a plural subject plural plural where do you find it bina bina so his many his many legs and then uh then they're going to talk about um uh this is thin and this is an adverb painfully clogging so his his painfully thin legs um and then uh, pick up this is in comparison to his normal uh, uh, extent or, or uh, size or, or dimensions. Um, and then, so these legs flickered, um, and, and how do, this means helplessly uh, for his eyes. Flickered to him help, helplessly before the eyes, or you could say flickered help, help, helplessly before his eyes. Great. So um, you just do the whole sentence here slowly. Zaina Filin. His many legs um in comparison to his uh normal dimensions dimensions yeah, I, I would i would actually pick up this first because then this is in comparison to the or contrast his, to this many painfully small legs mm -hmm. in right. comparison or, to his his like standard dimension or his <laughs> that, that's, um, nice. that's nice yeah 
flickered helpless, helplessly to him for, for him before his eyes. Exactly, yeah. So his many painfully thin legs, um, etc. Great. All right, that's the end of this, this first uh, paragraph, and you've just now read through and, and hopefully understand and got a good feel for his style uh, somewhat. But you've just now read the, one of the most, uh, be, uh, most famous opening paragraphs in short stories in European literature. Congratulations. Come back again for the next paragraph, and hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.